In this series of videos, we're going to be covering a topic in physics. We're going to be covering the topic of two-dimensional motion. Um, two-dimensional kinematics is another way of putting it. So this series of videos is on the kinematics of two-dimensional motion. Now, this series of videos is part of a larger series of videos, which is covering constant acceleration kinematics in general. So you can see that we're actually now on the third part of this four-part uh, project. So we're dealing here with the general subject of constant acceleration kinematics. Um, well, the first part of dealing with that is to deal with one-dimensional motion, and I have a series of videos dealing with that. Um, the next portion to cover is one-dimensional projectile motion. And I also have a series of videos that deals with that. And now we're on the third series of videos in this overall project, how to deal with two-dimensional kinematics, two-dimensional motion. Uh, and then this series of videos I haven't made yet, uh, but hopefully I'll have the time to move on and make this final series of videos on two-dimensional projectile motion. Now, two-dimensional projectile motion is just a type of two-dimensional motion in general, uh, but this is so important that it's worth giving it its own series of videos. Okay, um, one thing I'd like to say is uh, I'm intending these videos for people who find this material to be difficult. And as a result, I'm trying to lay out the concepts very step by step in a systematic and logical fashion. Uh, and therefore, um, even if what you care about is two-dimensional motion, I strongly recommend that before you watch this video on two-dimensional motion, I strongly recommend that you first go back and do these two sets of videos on one-dimensional motion. If you're finding this material difficult, it's important to have a firm foundation. In this series of videos, I'm going to be taking it for granted that you've already mastered one-dimensional motion, and I'm also going to be taking it for granted that you're comfortable with the notation and the techniques that I've been using in these videos. I'm going to be taking it for granted that you're comfortable with the systematic approach and notation that I've been using in these videos, and you're probably not going to be comfortable, comfortable with those if you haven't already watched these two videos on one-dimensional motion. Um, so if you haven't watched these videos yet, I would recommend that you actually stop watching this video right now and go back and do this video this series of videos and then do the series on one-dimensional projectile motion. Only then do I think you're going to be in good shape to, to get a lot of benefit out of this series of videos on two-dimensional motion. Even if what you mostly care about is two-dimensional motion, it's important to be familiar with one-dimensional motion first. And by the same token, even if what you merely, mainly care about is projectile motion, you should do this series of videos on general two-dimensional motion first. Uh, for one thing, I haven't even made this series yet on projectile motion, but even when I have, um, this last series of videos is going to be building on the general ideas of two-dimensional motion. So you're going to get a lot more out of the videos if you do them in order. So I hope that you'll be able to find the time uh, to do these videos uh, in order. All right, so again, the topic we're going to be covering in this particular series of videos is constant acceleration kinematics applied to general two-dimensional motion. In this series of videos, we're covering the topic in physics, constant acceleration kinematics applied to general two-dimensional motion. Uh, in this series of videos, we're not talking about rotational kinematics. That's a separate topic. Uh, we're not talking about rotation, just normal movement from one place to another, translational motion. Uh, why is this important material? Uh, well, for one thing, this is important because most physics courses um, are going to um, definitely focus on two-dimensional motion and eventually two-dimensional projectile motions. This is important if you want to be able to solve a lot of problems on your exams and homeworks. Um, but this is also important because you're going to need these skills in the later portions of your course as well. In fact, what I'm especially focusing on in these videos in kinematics, I'm not really doing the hardest problems that you'd be likely to see in kinematics. My goal here is not to help you get the hardest problems right in kinematics. My goal is to set you up so that you have the kinematic skills that you need for when you proceed to other topics later in um, the course. So even when you proceed to other topics like mechanics and Newton's second law, you're still going to need to have a firm foundation in kinematics. And that's the purpose of this series of videos, to make sure that you're not going to be falling behind in your course, but that you're going to be able to keep up with the basic kinematics that you need, um, not just for the kinematics portion of the course, but the later portions of the course as well. Um, one particularly important skill that we're going to introduce in this vid series of videos is breaking vectors into components. Once you start moving in two dimensions, you have to break your vectors into components. And the skill of breaking vectors into components is going to be crucial not just for kinematics, uh, but for most of the rest of your physics course as well. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website, 
There's a link to my website in the info box. Here's the address, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thanks. These videos are intended for students who are finding this material to be difficult. So as I've already mentioned in the previous series, uh, if you do not find this material to be difficult, you might actually find these videos kind of boring because I'm going to be going very slow and repeating myself uh, a lot. Uh, if you find the videos to be boring, maybe you should uh, find some other way to learn the material. Uh, but I hope that going slow and giving lots of repetitive examples uh, will be helpful for students who find this material difficult. Also, um, as I've already mentioned in the previous series of videos, I'm going to adopt a little bit of a bossy tone in these videos. I'm going to be bossy in the sense that I'm going to be telling you exactly the way to solve the problems. I'm going to give you a, uh, the, an exact five-step approach that I'd like you to use. And I'm going to be I'm recommending the precise notation that I recommend that you use. Even if some of my, to my, some of my notation might be a little bit different than your instructors are using. Uh, but after all, if your instructor's way was doing it for you, you probably wouldn't be looking at these videos in the first place. So I hope that you'll adopt some of the notation that I'm using in these videos, even if this is not the way your instructor does the problem. Uh, I'm trying to use notation that will be especially helpful for people who are finding this material difficult. So I'm going to keep hectoring you and um, reminding you and insisting that you should be not just trying to get the problems right, you should be trying to get them right in the same exact way that I'm presenting them on the board. The way that I'm presenting the problems on the board is the exact notation and approach that I recommend that you use on these problems. And I'm going to keep insisting and reminding um, you that you should try to imitate uh, my approach when you're solving the problems.